Okay, so last time we were talking about uh, Turing machines or algorithms for or about regular languages. Uh, for regular languages. Okay, so we talked about the A, the accept DFA, which is the language of, that consists of a DFA B, or an encoding of a DFA and a string, such that B accepts W, where you know, B is a DFA and W is a string. <coughs> and this is a string. Now, how do we construct an, uh, a Turing machine or an algorithm for this? So the idea is just to simulate the DFA. Simulate the DFA. If the DFA accepts W, accept W, otherwise reject. And we talked about E for empty DFA. It checks if the language of a given DFA is empty. So B is a DFA and the language of B is empty. And what was the idea? How, how, did, we, uh, how, how did we construct a Turing machine that will check? Turing machine or an algorithm? Algorithm, right? You know, at this point, we use Turing machine and algorithm interchangeably because we said that, uh, you know, according to the Turing thesis, anything that can be uh, done by a computer can be done by a, a Turing machine. The Turing machine represents, or the, the Turing machine is powerful enough to do anything that a general purpose computer can do, or anything that for which there is an algorithm. You know, anything for which there is an algorithm, you can do it by a computer. If there is no algorithm, for it, you cannot do it using a computer. Because an algorithm is just a step-by-step -step procedure for solving a problem. And if there is no algorithm, there is no step-by-step -step procedure. It's something that you cannot do using a computer. And we will see examples. You know, this will not make sense until we see some examples of uh, problems that cannot, be, uh, that cannot be solved using computers. Okay, so how did we do this? Check for empty? Yes? Uh, you, do a, you traverse the graph from the start state, and if you don't reach any of the substates, then it's the empty DFA. Yeah, exactly. So th the DFA for this, let's call it M, DFA M. So mark the start state. <coughs> mark start state. Repeat until no more marking is possible. Repeat what uh, uh, for every transition uh, x, y if x is marked mark y. And keep doing this until no more marking is possible. So this, this is just a graph traversal. You try to mark all the, uh, all the nodes in the graph that are reachable. Now, if no accept state <coughs> is marked, which means that the uh, the set of strings that are accepted is empty. Uh, accept. Else. Reject. Now this may look silly or useless. You know, why, why would we want to check if the, 
uh, if the language of a DFA is empty and is this useful like if someone writes a and and if uh, a DFA for which uh, the language is empty that does not accept any strings why is this useful now we will study uh, uh, an algorithm or a problem that we can solve using this the problem is DFA equivalence so ec DFA is the DFA equivalence problem so given two DFAs check if they are equivalent is uh, a and b so again you are given the encoding of a DFA a the encoding of a DFA b a and b are DFAs and language of A equals language of B. So we're checking if they have the same language. You know, as we have seen in DFAs, you know, you can have an infinite number of DFAs that have the same language. Now this is useful. Now how can we solve this useful problem uh, using this DF, this uh, Turing machine. In fact, the idea is to use a certain uh, set identity. So there is an identity in sets. If two sets are equal, so if two sets are equal, if set uh, A or set X and set Y are equal, are the same, then if you take x minus y, x minus y must be empty, and y minus x uh, y minus x should also be empty. If two sets are equal, like you know these are two sets, right? x and y, these are not equal. Because if you take, you know, x minus y, what will x minus y be? x minus y is going to be this. And what's y minus x? y minus x is this. So these are not equal. But if you have two equal sets, right, then the, everything is in the intersection then both x and y are in the intersection of x and so this is the intersection so everything is going to be in the intersection and this and this are going to be empty so uh, l uh, let l of c equal l of a minus l of b union L of B minus L of A. Okay, so L of A minus L of B, union L of B minus L of A. If this is empty, if L of C is empty, then A and B or L of A and L of B are equal. So, uh, L of A equals L of B if and only if L of C equals what? Uh, phi. Yeah. So L of A equals L of B if and only if L of C equals phi. So then uh, how do we write L of A minus L of B? You know L of A minus L of B, L of C we can write it as L of A intersected with the complement of L of B union L of B intersected with the complement of L of A. Subtraction and intersection with the complement are the same thing. Subtraction and intersection with the complement are the same thing. So how do we solve this problem? So we write uh, Turing machine, let's call it uh, T, Turing machine T. So we construct uh, 
a DFA for L of C. Now, do we know how to construct a DFA for L of C? In fact, we know, except for the intersection, we did not uh, describe it in great detail. I, you know, I kind of this gave a high-level description of a DFA that recognizes the intersection of two languages. But basically, you know, if you have, I think I described it. You have, uh, I can remind you of that. Uh, you know, if the if the set of states for A is has m states for A and n states for B, then how many states will you have in the intersection? M times n, the cross product of m and n, uh, and then you can build an, an a, a DFA for intersection. But the idea here is that we know that regular languages are closed under intersection, so we can always construct a DFA for the intersection, we can always construct a DFA for the uh, complement. And in, uh, constructing a DFA for the complement is something that we have studied. It's simpler, easier. OK, so we know that we can construct a DFA for L of C. Now, just you know, simulate, uh, let's call it DFA, construct a DFA x for L of C, simulate x now if simulate x using a string now uh, simulate x the well in fact we don't need to simulate it we need to run this Turing machine apply Turing machine m sorry apply or run Turing machine m for e DFA on X. See if it's empty or not empty. Now, if M accepts, what should we do? If M accepts, accept. If the language for L of C is empty, accept. Else, reject. Again, the idea, we have a, you know, think of these uh, Turing machines as functions. Again, a Turing machine is an algorithm, and an algorithm can be implemented using a function, uh, using a, some programming language. So you have this function that takes, a, Turing, that takes a, a DFA and tells you if the language for that is empty. So here, you construct a DFA X for L of C, which is L of A intersected with complement of L of B, union L of B intersected with a complement of L of A, and input this into this Turing machine, this function. And if this function accepts, meaning it tells you that the language is phi, then accept. This means that uh, A and B, L of A and L of B are the same. Otherwise, reject. Any questions? Okay, so next time we'll attempt to do the same thing for uh, context-free languages.